Hey everybody, real quick before we get into the show, we just wanted to do our due diligence. If you're listening on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Feel free to hit the notification bell so you know when the next one's coming. If you're listening to us on an audio format, please by all means follow us there and keep listening. We appreciate you a lot. And uh, we have a Patreon you can support us on. We have an Instagram. We have a Twitter you can follow us at. And we also, most importantly, have our hotline, which is flashing on the screen right now. Uh, we're collecting a, a number of good little anecdotes, uh, putting them together into a, a big uh, episode. So please, by all means, keep sending us your stories about ghosts, the government watching you, Sasquatch, you name it. Whatever you want to tell us, please tell us a lie, but just make it entertaining. Uh, <laughs> call us, send us a message. It is totally anonymous. We promise we don't want your information. Uh, and that said, enjoy the show, guys. everybody welcome back to the acid cat spirit hour i'm the colonel this is caleb we hope all you ford explorers are doing well uh sorry about last week that episode got redacted we'll talk about that at a different time or if maybe you see us in public up here in public i say <laughs> but if you're up on the spaceship and you're talking to us we can explain it to you but that episode was redacted uh this week we're doing well i hope you are as well caleb how was your week my week was good uh i saw something flying in the sky that i couldn't explain uh, come to find out, it was just a bird I hadn't seen before. What kind of bird but, was it? I don't know. <laughs> it's still a UFO to me. <laughs> yeah, that's the nice thing about UFOs. That's an unidentified sides. feathered object. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the only person who saw a UFO this week. Uh, Miley Cyrus said that she was either chased down by a UFO or smoked too much weed <laughs> i've been there man <laughs> boy do i know that feeling <laughs> my dad's listened to this he knows that feeling too <laughs> uh the pop star revealed that she once had a close encounter of the peak miley kind after being chased down by a ufo while traveling through southern california with a friend or she smoked too much weed that she bought from a guy in a van <laughs> uh, she did say she made eye contact with the pilot of the ufo and while it didn't scare her she just couldn't wrap her head around it. <laughs> just, there's an Uber driver somewhere that's like, I think that was Miley Cyrus. But it's like she ran, swerved out of the way. Yeah. She's just standing in the middle of the road. He's like, ah, fuck. Was that Hannah Montana? <laughs> it's like when Travis Walton showed back up after he fucked a bunch of aliens just in the middle of the street. Guys, I fucked Miley Cyrus. No, you didn't, dude. <laughs> no, Go back didn't. to saying you fucked an alien. We believe that more. Yeah. We still think you killed your coworkers, <laughs> or that they killed you. I guess. Anyway, yeah. Listen to that episode. What I just said will be less confusing. Uh, that's. I think that's fucking hilarious. Although the one, I'll make one caveat for Ms. Cyrus, and that's uh, if anybody, if I trust anybody to have a knowledge base on buying drugs from a guy in a van, I trust Miley. She's done it so many times. She knows what she's doing. Yeah. She knows the right guys with the right vans. She knows the, the right van. Yeah. The people you don't trust buying drugs from a van are people who don't have any experience doing it. Yeah. Just like with anything else, you don't let a inexperienced surgeon fix you either yeah. you know so <laughs> that dude just gave me a great deal in his van he charged me 35 dollars for a gram <laughs> yeah 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 so i can't believe it. that's been, that's every high school student yeah that's what every burnout does to every high school student where's this tea or where's this oh, yes, smell that like eighth pizza? of weed will be 120 dollars young man <laughs> why does this smell like pizza <laughs> it's definitely not oregano well i have a little news uh that i wanted to talk about too because i think it's pretty interesting uh hits close to me uh as i've talked a little bit on the podcast and as you're very aware when i was a youngster i was a train hopping punk and uh, what that means, uh, I lived in Arizona, and what that meant was that I spent a lot of time at the Salton Sea. Uh, for those who don't know, the Salton Sea is one of America's most polluted areas. It was supposed to be like a uh, sort of a mid-century vacation paradise like Palm Springs is. It's in a similar area in Southern California. It's right outside of Joshua Tree. And uh, there's a <laughs> unfortunate natural reservoir there that's been charred that's caused by uh, agricultural runoff. Mm -hmm. So the entire lake just smells like dead fish and all of the beach is all dead fish. If you've ever seen Salvation Mountain, yeah. that's right next to it, the slab, slab city. I've spent some time there as well. Uh, that's right behind. So that whole area is kind of like off the grid. Yeah. So what's interesting is one of the things that's in that incredibly toxic lake apparently is a lot of lithium. And in America, we don't really have any lithium mines, but as you all know, I'm sure on the device that you're probably listening or watching to this on, uses a lithium battery. Mm -hmm. Obviously our cars are going that direction. 
lithium batteries aren't the most modern you know that's going to change um so we won't use it forever but for the time being we need a lot more of it and there's apparently enough lith lithium stored in the salton sea uh to provide 40 percent of the global need for lithium which is pretty crazy it's a lot of lithium yeah so they're going to build a lithium mine there um and that's a this is an interesting idea because typically the immediate thought is mines are bad mines ruin the environment but the environment there's already ruined yeah so and a, as we just sit and wait is getting worse and worse yeah well and one of the concerns with the salton sea is that as it continues to evaporate because it's a runoff reservoir it evaporates and as it continues to evaporate it one only needs to look at the newly revealed bathtub ring at lake mead to see how fast a lake can evaporate out there uh if it does that there's a lot of toxic dust in that lake um or well i mean it's fluid now but it'll yeah. become toxic dust and that'll be sent into the atmosphere and that's not a good thing it's like when we hear about uh yeah what were the the town that was like the ancient russian town that was uncovered during Oh, okay. that was in the ice? Yeah. That was, like, unfrozen? And everybody was, like, the worms. They were like, don't <laughs> thaw them out. Now's not the time. Because one of the concerns with climate change as well uh, is that there are things like Ebola under uh, Siberian polar caps that could come back out. Yeah. There are diseases and bacteria and stuff that are frozen in place. I mean, hell, Captain America's down there. So yeah. who knows what else is going to be There's there. woolly mammoths and dinosaurs. When I was a kid, when I was in fourth grade, my fourth grade teacher's husband was on the team that found the big intact woolly mammoth in the dakotas oh that's awesome yeah he was the coolest person to our fourth grade class oh yeah because he was dr grant but in real life so <laughs> everybody like, was like what's hey, a t-rex like and he's like guys i don't know <laughs> hey guys how's it going i'm your teacher's husband uh i found a woolly mammoth and you're like you're my favorite person <laughs> yeah ever actually i think <laughs> yeah you're now and you know she would like it would be like a celebrate he would bring her like lunch you know because they're yeah. a married couple so he'd do like sweet things and yeah. he'd bring her lunch and the whole class would be like yeah dinosaur guys here we Woo! got dinosaur questions <laughs> it's a really good spouse what's have. a t-rex taste like and he's <laughs> like how would i know I that i don't know i brought her a turkey sandwich <laughs> is it a t-rex sandwich <laughs> he's like why are you guys obsessed with eating dinosaurs <laughs> It's because we saw it eat that goat. <laughs> yeah, well, so those were a couple fun little uh, weird eccentric bits of news we wanted to get into before we get into the main story today, uh, which is a fun one. It's a, uh, today we're, we're doing a mystery. We are a mystery, maybe a curse? Yeah, I like it. It definitely we're, seems like a curse. We've talked about a few curse things. We talked about the Coronor Diamond, which if you haven't listened to that one, that's a cool one. That was kind of like a inverse curse. Sort it of. was. A blessing. It, it was a what blessing. Yeah, yeah, that's what we call it. <laughs> but inverse curse is fun to say, and it's the title of the episode. So I think, you know, there's Little Bastard, which is I, arguably one of our more compelling episodes. Yeah. It's also one of our most suppressed episodes because it's largely about Nazis. That's maybe the least monetizable word you could yeah. say multiple times in a podcast but we do love a curse we love a cursed item uh and by all accounts it seems like the curse item we're talking about today um might have had a bigger curse than any of the rest of them and yeah. that is the santa maria the santa maria and i don't know what you're asking that santa maria yeah yeah that's santa, santa maria. maria we're talking about the ship that sailed the ocean blue in 1492 and then sunk <laughs> subsequently <laughs> in 1492 and we're going to talk about what happened to it afterwards um and we'll get into all that today we're going to talk about christopher columbus and pineapples and all that shit but why don't we start uh caleb at the beginning why don't we talk about the ship why it was important how it came to be how columbus came to be yeah you know, give everybody a little bit of backstory so in may of 1492 uh columbus was appointed admiral of the spanish army if you guys know the true history of what was actually taught to us in middle and high school he was kind of just a washed up explorer trying to make a name for himself and he... and also an admiral is just a guy with two boats Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's two, just the captain of two or more boats. If you have more than one boat, you become an admiral. Yeah. Um, so he goes to Spain. He's like, hey, guys, I'm going to set up a trade route between Spain and India uh, because I don't know how the world works. I'm pretty sure if I just go that way, I can get us there faster. And they're like, yeah, we don't really know how the world works either. Uh, the earth is flat and the map is this big. Go for it. You're now the admiral. Um, here are two boats. You have... The Nina and the Pinta, but you're going to need a bigger boat. Those are two small boats. You're going to need a bigger boat, and it's up to you to find that bigger boat. And he goes, cool, thank you so much. Uh, they gave him some orders that said, hey, we're the Spanish Royal Navy. Uh, we're allowed to take any ship we want. 
and they gave him some money to pay a crew. It's like in a TV show when a cop stops a car and he's like, <laughs> I can take your car. That's If that ever happens, that's illegal. A, co- a police officer cannot commandeer your vehicle. That's bullshit. A, they're bastards, so don't give them your car. But just don't. You don't have to do that. If they're chasing somebody, that's on them. Let them handle it. Don't they have cars? We pay for them to have cars. <laughs> they have oh, like, yeah. better cars than most people. They got like Teslas and Lamborghinis and stuff <laughs> in major cities. <laughs> Lamborghini machines. Um, so he's given this order that said, just take someone's ship and uh, some Here's money. A, one IOU for a ship. <laughs> some money, and they're like, you got 10 days. You got 10 days to find your ship and start sailing. This sounds like a reality competition show. <laughs> Guys grocery games. We give some- you two ships, <laughs> but you have to find the third. You've got 10 days mm-hmm. and a tight budget, and you've got to make it all the way to India. And they're like interviewing people who own ships, and they're like, well, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and my husband's a professional puppeteer, <laughs> and our ship budget is $1.6 million, <laughs> and we need to make it to the New World in about a week and a half. <laughs> so, these orders were always very unpopular, because well, yeah, of course no they were. <laughs> you're, like, you're like a fisherman, or a sailor, or like a cargo ship uh, pi- pilot. Captain, <laughs> uh, you know, a different, cargo ship pilot. That's a, this ship has a pilot. That's yes. a different kind. Uh, and you're just going about your business, and the military comes up to you and is like, hey, your boat's now mine, and also I guess you work for me now. And people are like, no, I hate this. Yeah. So, people, imagine how an anti-masker would react to that. Like, <laughs> You think it's bad enough that you were politely asked, or maybe even told you had to put a piece of cloth over your mouth? Yeah. Imagine if... Taking your guns. What if I take your whole fucking McMansion and your lifted truck? Uh, I I like to think if the U.S. military, you know how they have those convoys? And your Oakleys. <laughs> and your goatee. <laughs> and your weird snake tattoo. Um, no, you know how the U.S. military has like the convoys when they send Humvees down the highway? I was in from one From base to day. base? Yeah. 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 Imagine if they did this. Where they just went up to a guy with like a Ford F-150 and they're like, hey, we're doing a convoy. We got to deliver some goods from one base to the other. We're going to take your truck to be part of this convoy to kind of protect the goods. And you're like, I don't, I had plans today, but I guess. And worse yet, like, because they could take any, they could take like a merchant ship. Imagine mm-hmm. if that's why the cable guy didn't show up. Like, hey man, I swear, I was actually going to make it at yeah. one, but... Then a guy just showed up and took my truck. Apparently, the military needed my truck. Hey, dude, where's my Amazon package? The military took my truck? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, likely story. I'm getting a refund. <laughs> but uh, the resistance of the town in every port that they went to was so abundant that instead of 10 days, it took 10 weeks <laughs> for them to find a ship. Because they'd go up to a ship and they're like, hey, can I inspect your ship? I'm with the Royal Navy. And they're like, fuck off, dude. I got stuff to do today. I think that also kind of speaks to how inept uh, bitch to fur Columbus was. Yeah. You know, because he like, he, we we know history has taught us that he was actually kind of a loser. Yes. Uh, and that he was just, you know, take he threw money at problems and people at problems and stuff. And it, I think it's very telling. I, I don't know. If I was given that amount of time, you would think, obviously the military thought that was a an appropriate amount of time to go get a ship. Yeah. It would be very funny if it was like taking him 10 weeks and they had to send a guy down who was like, Oh my God. And he just went down to the docks and was like, you ship, give it to me guns, do it or else. And the guy's like, yeah, sure. Here, (laughs) um, that hard, Chris, was it that fucking hard? So they ran into an issue because it started taking 10 weeks and they were running out of money and time. Yeah. So (laughs) they ran out of time like 60 days ago. They, uh, they didn't, have time to keep going port to port looking ships so columbus just decided to look through port ledgers and he found two ships that had a good description that he thought would be great and luckily they were owned by the same person it was the santa maria and the giega and he's like oh both these ships will work they're very similar let's go meet this guy and get his ship so juan de la cosa was the captain and owner of the ship. He was also a very well-known explorer and colonist. Yes, he was a a famous navigator and geographer. Yeah. Um, And so they go to the port where these two ships are held. Columbus meets with De La Cosa, and he's like, Hey, man, I really like your two ships. I would like to commandeer one of them by orders of the uh, Royal Navy. And De La Cosa goes, Hate to break it to you, dude. That's the same ship. (laughs) It's just one ship. I got two names for it. I don't know why it's in there, but it's just one ship. Columbus goes, well, I'm taking it because I'm out of time and money. 
Which, red flag number one for a cursed item is that it used to have a different name. Yes. Every time it gets changed. It, it always gets changed. With Coronor, if you go back and listen to that story, it didn't change. Nothing happened. The fate, the curse, all that stuff didn't happen until it was given a name and it was taken. Yep. It feels very similar to this. If little it, Bastard. If it changed Little Bastard was appearance. literally named Little Bastard and repainted and mm -hmm. then went on to kill a bunch of people. So, uh... This starts the relationship between Columbus and De La Cosa, and it is a rocky start. And if you're thinking, oh, well, what if it's like a buddy movie where they become friends at the end? Like The Rock and uh, Kevin Hart? In literally every movie that they're in together? <laughs> um, the answer is no. <laughs> no, uh, it does not get better. Well, De La Cosa was, while, you know, a shithead now through the frame of a like more educated history, mm -hmm. he was a far more competent person than Christopher Columbus was. He was. Like, he actually... A, he had the ship that Christopher was looking for. Yep. Uh, but he was, you know, this is a person who had a lot of the places that Christopher Columbus um, is famed for having, quote unquote, discovered, which of course he didn't. I'm an indigenous person and we won't talk about this a whole lot. I won't, we don't need to bring a lot of that up, but I don't like Christopher Columbus. I think he's a piece of shit. I don't think anybody earned this land. I think it was stolen from us. I would like it to be returned. Yep. That's it. That's the whole. <laughs> First of all, fuck you all. That's the whole thing. But, I, you know, De La Cosa was somebody who was more capable at doing what he was set out to do. Yes. He found spices. He found the things he was looking for. He found the lands he was looking for. He took them over. Um, Christopher Columbus didn't do any of that fucking shit. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and... Everyone that worked for Columbus knew that. So De La Cosa and Columbus had a disagreement from the start, and it never got better. And it's because De La Cosa was like, you can have my ship, and I will sail for you, but you got to remember, I'm the captain of this ship. And Columbus turns around and goes, that's cool. I'm the admiral? Uh, because not only am I in charge of your ship now, I've got the Nina I'm in charge the of the Nina and the Pinta. I'm the admiral. I pull rank. And... He basically did that with the and other two ships as like, well. I fucking hate you so much. So on all three ships, even though like everyone had agreed to sail voluntarily, um, yeah, but what's there? That's voluntold. Yeah, uh, there was like com constant complaints and non cooperation. Uh, we now like to call that mutiny. <laughs> uh, and, I don't think it counts when it's Columbus though, because you're oh, right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and on board, since the Santa Maria was the flagship it was the main ship and columbus was always on it um there were always disagreements because while columbus and de la cosa both worked for the crown the admiral pulled rank so when that happens he's supposed to watch over all three boats and the captains are supposed to watch over the boats like steering and making sure everything's in order but columbus was such a fucking asshole <laughs> That he wouldn't let, De he basically let De La Cosa steer in the direction he told him to steer, and that was it. Yeah. He kept being like, hey, dude, do this thing. And De La Cosa's like, Jerry, you don't have to do that. I'm the fucking <laughs> captain. Don't listen to this, dude. <laughs> and it caused so much contention. In that situation, if you're one of De La Cosa's men, you're not listening to Columbus. Yeah. Who the fuck's this guy? You, oh, absolutely. That's your captain. He's been you've been crewing the ship for however long you've been crewing it. You work for that guy. You don't work you work for De La Cosa. Yeah. You do not work for Christopher Columbus. No. Christopher Columbus really made his fame. This is a fun little piece. So you and I are in the hospitality business. We've mm -hmm. talked about that a little bit. Chefs and stuff. And one of the things that you see in our business is pineapples. People think that it's a universal symbol of hospitality, but it's not. It's a universal symbol of colonialism. And the reason that that is, is because when Columbus found them in Brazil, the Taino Indians that he found that had them, I'd say Indians, that's not even correct, and I say that as one, but <laughs> anyway, none of it matters, right? The natives, the Tainos, rather than starting an economy of share where it was like, oh, you guys have this really cool fruit, I would like to buy that from you and take it back with me and show that we can be peaceful and share. No, instead, they slaughtered them all, enslaved them, and that's where... So pineapples, that connection with pineapples in South, South America is where the American slave trade started. Mm -hmm. So for all of the hospitality people out there who have their little pineapples and love them, know for a fact that's a symbol of slavery and of conquest. That's yeah. all that it's ever been. The reason it was so popular in Europe is because that's exactly what it was. And now if you flip it upside down, it says that you're a swinger. <laughs> <laughs> I just found that out the other day. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, the reason I found that out is Why because... Why does that indicate that? <laughs> uh, the reason I found that out is because we had some people in at the bar, and for summer, they 
uh, like most white families, have a tiny little flag post outside their house yeah. where they put seasonal flags out. Okay. And uh, they, the woman, the wife was talking to me, and she said she found this real cute pineapple flag at the dollar store and put it up. And a friend of hers came over and was like, hey, you should probably take that down. And she's like, why? And she goes, because in a Trump's America? <laughs> she said, that shows that you're a swinger, and I don't think you guys are. And she's like, oh, fuck, yeah, I'm taking that down she, immediately. The better way for that story to end is, joke's on you. <laughs> yeah. That's just because you and Terry are fucking boring. You guys are weird. You yeah, we like, just don't invite you. <laughs> yeah, you just seem like you wouldn't be into what we're into, which is, you know, consensual lovemaking. Um, anyways, back to the story. <laughs> now, let's just talk about swinging for the rest of this podcast. We're 20 minutes in, and now we're just going to talk for 40 minutes about swinging. But yeah, so I only say that anecdote about pineapples. I don't mean to go off on a tangent, and there's not any judgment necessarily thrown that way. But you should fucking know that's what it's a representation of, and that's what it actually means. That's what it actually stands for. And then it's not a symbol of hospitality in like a welcoming way, but in a like, don't worry, there's whites in here too kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not the best. Anyway, so Columbus De La Cosa fucking hate each other. Yes. Because Columbus is a ding-dong and De La Cosa is a, trying to get through a day at work. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of the hospitality business, it's like Columbus is like that dude who sits at the bar and tells you how his grandfather made drinks or yeah. whatever. And it's like, buddy, I don't give a fuck. That or, has no bearing on what I do for a living. Uh, Columbus is the like regional manager that comes in once a month and just fucks with the GM's like systems. That work perfectly fine. Yeah, and like everyone really likes the GM and he's like, hey guys, just so you know, Gary's coming into town again today, so just be on your best behavior. And he's like, why the fuck are there towels everywhere? And the GM's like, Jerry, I told you, man, the AC is leaking, and I've told you like six times, and you won't get it fixed. And he's like, pick up these goddamn towels. If you need me, I'm at the bar. <laughs> like, so Columbus would always overstep his boundaries, and the captains De La Cosa, ships, did you eat my hummus? I wrote my name on it. Uh, we all work with uh, Columbus in that sense. Um, <laughs> it's fine. He won't watch this. Columbus, are you <laughs> eating my walnuts? So the captains and the crew would often disobey him, and it would piss him off so much that he wrote in his journal... His journal. ...that he was so uncomfortable, and he wished to rush home and bring matters before the queen. Yeah, Mom! And this is the quote from his journal. I will not suffer the deeds of evil-disposed persons with little worth who without respect for me, to whom they owe their positions, presume to set up their own wills with little ceremony. Ooh, he was mad. Which, if you don't speak old-timey, that yeah. translates to, fuck these dudes. These dudes are being mean. They're little shitty boys <laughs> who have no respect for me, their employer, and they just do whatever they want. <laughs> they don't wash my clothes. They're not respectful. Do you know they don't even hold the door or a chair for me? Do you think he just wanted to be wined and dined by the crews? <laughs> you could feel the tension in yeah, the air at all him. times. Everybody's waiting to kick him There's off the There's a point chair. of contention at all points. And well, that... he's like having a snitch around. You yeah. know, he works directly for the queen. He's a tattletale to the queen. Yes. Uh, and I just... Does anybody like having that around? Can you? I can't even work if I have somebody like that around me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so after the well-known thing that Columbus did, which was discover India. Yeah. So Columbus bounced around the Caribbean a whole bunch on yes. these three ships, uh, including the aforementioned pineapple incident with the Tainos. Started up the American slave trade. Uh, really made the worst of all, you know, made way for all the Spaniards and the conquistadors, and it was just a bad time. It yeah. Was a, it was a real bad time for uh, indigenous people in the Caribbean and in Central and South America. Columbus uh, decided, well, I'm going to keep bouncing around because in his mind, he was like, finding this new land, new land, isn't enough to make me a great explorer. I have to find portable valuables. Well, yeah, it's the pineapple. He's like, I already claim this entire region as property of Spain, even though there's already people here with a populist trading and agricultural. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he was like, what are those? Those are buildings and people and commerce and language? Nah, yeah. no, 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 this is Spain. He said, I have to find more things to bring back to Spain. And his three goals were gold, spices, and people in that order. Yep. Gold first, spices next. <laughs> 
can't find the other two, we'll just bring some people back. Well, like I said, that's that's the slave trade. Like Christopher Columbus, whether you think that you know your opinion on whether or not colonialism should exist, yeah, Christopher Columbus planted the seeds for significantly more terrible things than just white people living in the U.S. Oh, yeah. The slave trade of the Caribbean was bolstered by his efforts, and that's not something that we should forget about. If you don't want to dislike him for, quote-unquote, discovering America, that's not a thing that bothers you, so be it. It should really bother you that he was very, very into slavery. He sure was. And that's why what's about to happen... And not even, like, the... There's no good kind of slavery, but he wasn't somebody who bought and sold slaves. He's somebody who went to places, snatched people up, and made them slaves. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's the absolute worst kind. Yeah, that makes what's about to happen even sweeter. <laughs> <laughs> so, on December 24th of 1492, so the day before Christmas... I believe um, that's called Christmas Eve, son. It is. Uh, <laughs> I sl- I, the night before Christmas. The nightmare before Christmas. Um <laughs> Columbus had written in his journal he had not slept for two and a half days. Back to that journal. So, Do you think it was pink? And I don't mean that in any sort of an effeminating way. <laughs> it just feels like it would be very floral. It smell of lavender. Yeah. It would be purple. You know? It's the only thing that smelled good on that boat. Yeah. <laughs> um, Columbus was exhausted from being a piece of shit. And at 11 p.m. Guys, he's I like, haven't slept for days. I have been out there slaving and raping. Whoo! I am bushed. <laughs> Ah, he's like, uh, it's 11 p.m. He looks at his Rolex that he stole, and he's like, it's 11 p.m. No, they told time by the stars. Like, oh, it's 11. Uh, it's 11. He's like, I'm going to lay down to sleep. <laughs> Dale goes to his right behind him. He's like, it's 8 p.m. <laughs> it's, it's, what, 11 o'clock at night? And he's like, dude, the sun just rose. I don't know what you're talking about. He's like... Anyways, India was cool, well, right, I, guys? I haven't slept for like two days. De La Cruz is like, you just woke up. <laughs> no, I'm really tired, man. You've been asleep this whole fucking time. <laughs> it's been nine months. You've been sleeping for nine months, dog. <laughs> we should have done a seance for this podcast so we could have the ghost of De La Cosa on so he could just bitch about Christopher Columbus. <laughs> um, but he decides to lay down and he's like, hey, uh, I'm going to go to sleep you're in charge and he points to the steersman and he's like you're in charge the steersman sounds like a guy blame me on being you know a, growing up on a ranch but that sounds like somebody in charge of inseminating a cow uh close it's the guy who steers the boat <laughs> i thought that was the captain no why <laughs> so it's actually funny um like I know I love the Pirates of the Caribbean movies uh on these <laughs> that i know i love I, we all we do. all know uh so on the Black Pearl, Captain Jack Sparrow is the captain. But most of the time, he does not steer the boat. Cotton, the guy with no tongue and the parrot on his shoulder, he's the steersman. He's the one that actually moves the wheel. Okay. That seems like it should be the captain's. What's the captain doing then? Uh, wandering around the ship, making sure everything's in order. Shouldn't he be able to see it from his roost? Well, he should, but he doesn't. Um, they have really What's poor a first eyesight. mate for? A uh, first mate is to pass along orders. Because if it was like a kitchen... Yeah. He's not... You don't run the pass. Yeah. You're the, you're the captain. Yeah. You drive the ship. You're on proteins. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this, uh, essentially, think of the steersman as Expo. Okay. Uh, think of the first mate as the Sioux and the captain as the exec. It sounds like the captain's the owner. It sounds well, like that's he spends true. The whole fucking yeah, it is. It sounds like he spends all night in the office. He's the um, getting what is drunk it? operations manager. Yeah, yeah, some made up GM. He's the GM. <laughs> so, basically, this chain of command. <laughs> now every asshole GM of every shitty Chili's is going to be on just like a captain. <laughs> Unsubscribed. You keep making fun of GMs. <laughs> it's a real <laughs> job. Listen, I worked hard at my 16 years at Red Robin. I don't deserve this disrespect. I came up from the host stand, which is approximately 20 feet that way. <laughs> and I still spend most of the time at the host stand because there's a really hot 17-year-old there. Which and we... I'm 45 years old and think that's okay. It's universally true. If you ever meet somebody who's like an older GM of a restaurant, just know. Just know. Uh, so there's this fun chain of command where Columbus is like, Hey, I'm going to bed. You're in charge of the ship. And the steersman is like... You know, the sea's pretty calm. I'm also going to go to sleep. You're in charge. And this goes down to where... This sounds like a (laughs) wink, wink, nudge, nudge thing. Where Oh, yeah. Yeah, where Columbus walked up and he was like, I sure am tired. (laughs) Eh? Like, they just discovered cocaine. And they're like, I haven't slept for a couple days. Eh? You want to go see if we can nod off? Lay down? 
A little uh, Colombian marching powder. <laughs> basically, it files its way down to the only person that's left awake is a cabin boy. It's like, it's sick. Um, which, if you're not familiar with ships, a cabin boy is usually the 12 to 13 year old kid. Who's just in charge of grabbing shit for other people? I don't think you need to be aware of ships to know that someone whose professional position <laughs> is called ends cabin in boy. boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only job that ends with boy that's a cool job is best boy, uh, and that's on any any production. And it's just a guy that holds stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, the admiral. Or Columbus was always like, you can't just leave random people in charge of steering the boat. I like that you don't want to call him Admiral Columbus. Yeah, I'm not calling him Admiral <laughs> Columbus. Um, but they put this cabin boy in charge nonetheless, and he's at the helm, and the tides start picking up. <laughs> he's like, hey guys, what happens if, uh, if like, it, uh, you need to steer the boat? And they're like, oh, you won't need to. Yeah, but what if I need to steer the boat? They're like, no, it's calm. Uh, the sea's calm, the sails are up, you're fine. And he's like, but what what happens if I do? And they're like, that's not going to happen. So that happens. <laughs> um, the currents start picking up, and they just kind of take the ship and start just booking it. And he's like, um, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Is your refrigerator running? And that causes the ship to crash into a coral reef. Ooh, beautiful. And this is from the cabin boys, or no. Sorry, this is from Columbus's son, Ferdinand. This is from his journal. Said, She struck so gently that it could be scarcely felt. The obstacle was not a shoal, but a bar protruding above the surface, a beach, and waves with audible surf. The ship was making way in an ever diminishing shallows and becoming embedded more and more deeply in the sandy bottom. The boy shouted. The admiral appeared, followed shortly by the captain. Under orders of the Admiral to sink an anchor astern to impede the drift, the captain and the seamen launched a boat. It's interesting because Ferdinand and his father uh, differ a lot in their accounts, which we'll get yeah. into yeah. on a lot of things. But one of them is def largely like what happened afterwards. But it's interesting that he describes it as it hit the rock so gently because it tore that fucking ship apart. Oh, it tore it apart. And this is a good time to bring up the size of the ships. We brought up the size of the Nina and Pinta a little bit at the beginning that they were smaller, single-deck ships. Yeah. But just were, to be clear... 40 feet long? Yeah. The Nina and the Pinta were 40 feet long? But the Santa Maria wasn't even twice that size. It was no, like it was a 60 foot long. 50 to 60 feet So long. we're talking about not even a big yacht. Like, I, not to flex, but you know, like, that's not that big of a boat. Mm. So... It being destroyed by the sea isn't that difficult. Like, there are shipping boats. The the shipping boat in a perfect storm is 40 feet long. Yeah. You know, or 50 feet long. Yeah. So that's about the same size. Yeah. I just, it's, I think it's, when we think of this conquest and we think of uh, these ships, you think of the Mayflower. You yeah. You think of an enormous schooner. And, you know, Mayflower, in the grand scheme of things, wasn't even that big of a ship. Mm. But this isn't a ship podcast, as much as you would yeah. love for it to be a ship podcast. So these were somewhere between <laughs> a brigadier and a schooner. Or not a schooner, a skipper. Uh, skipper is about 30 feet. Brigadier is about 60 feet. So this was closer to a brigadier. This is where I get too much no, of That's fine, though. This is what uh, people want. Yeah. They want to know about ships. We're uh, talking about ships. But so with that information, I mean... This is an all-wood ship. How is it held together? With nails? Is it nails? Yes. It's typically nails. Um, sometimes plates on the inside. Like, uh, you got to think, they'd be big metal hand-forged plates to bolt the supports. It, ship building's real weird because you have to get the wood wet and then bend it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you basically, by bending it at a certain angle and another certain angle, nailing it and putting a plate, a backing plate... It's held together with nails, but also by friction. Yeah, yeah, force. Um, it becomes like a stress member. Yeah, yeah. so... I've it, had motorcycles where, and cars for that matter, like Volkswagens, the engine is part of, it's a stress member of the frame. Yeah. Like, without it, the frame doesn't actually function. It'll fold. Yeah, uh, so, basically, there would be inside supports that are pressing out, outside boards that are pressing in, and okay. support beams that are pressing up and down. And in this case, a whole bunch of coral pressing through the yeah, bottom. Yeah, pressing through the bottom, <laughs> which is causing it to basically unflex... And causing boards to pop out and stuff. Well, coral is terrifying. Like, I, you know, I haven't fallen in the coral too many times in the ocean, but when you do, man, it is gnarly. It is the sharpest shit. It fucks you up. Like, you can stub your toe on coral and just eviscerate a yeah. toe, you know? I, uh, 
I cut my finger I'm up so on I'm so glad it's once. all being bleached and destroyed off the planet. <laughs> fuck that coral. Fuck coral. The official stance <laughs> is fuck coral. Um, coral! <laughs> I was about to make the same joke. Uh, he was useless in The Walking Dead. No, I cut my thumb up on coral at the same time of getting stung on the foot by a jellyfish. Oh, God damn. Uh, the ocean was like, get the fuck out of here, boy. <laughs> and I was like, fine, I'll get out. Oh, Everything sorry. hurts now. I just wanted a dip. So, De La Cosa, the captain... Sucking on your thumb, pissing on your foot. <laughs> uh, don't pee on your foot if you have a jellyfish thing. What are you talking about? It doesn't actually help. Ah, Study, Gus studies Johnson have been shown. otherwise. Uh, the best way to do it, so the reason jellyfish things hurt so much is they implant a barb okay. into you. Um, best way to do like it how is... how cats get, have sex? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, get shaving cream, put it on there, let it sit for a couple seconds, and then take like a debit card or a room key or something like that and push the opposite direction. And it'll push the barb and out. And it'll push the barb out. Yeah. Because ah. uh, that barb is slightly poisonous. That's why it hurts so much. The stuff you learn on this podcast. Yeah. I didn't think we are just talking about a ship game. <laughs> and, you know, it's a great moment. Back so, to the Santa Maria being eviscerated. Yeah. Uh, De La Cosa, as the boat's starting to sink, De La Cosa, the captain... Do you think he popped up and was like, thank God? <laughs> kind of. So, he was like, finally, I'm done with this fucking asshole. Maybe it was his idea. Maybe he came up to Columbus and he was like, hey, man, I'm going to hit the hay. I know you've been up for a while, but I really need to... I need to, I need to sleep, sleep, man. Plus, it's really calm. I bet, I bet a cabin boy could watch the boat right now. And Columbus was like, you know I don't like that. <laughs> he wakes up to the ship sinking and he's like, yes! <laughs> so, in a notable act of cowardice, or as Columbus wrote about it in his journal, an act of treason. <laughs> I uh, think anytime anybody did anything to Columbus, it that's treason. True. Yeah. Uh, De La Cosa and a couple of <laughs> loyalists to him pushed the rowboat off the back of the boat. That's typically where it's held. <laughs> they took the escape boat? Yeah. It, um, <laughs> See, dude, he more, fucking hated this guy. Some more boat facts. <laughs> typically, uh, if it's a brigadier, which this was, the boat is front to back. The captain's cabin is back here. Uh, there's a little platform where the wheel is, and then hanging up on ropes on the back is a rowboat. And typically, it's because you couldn't get a boat that yeah, large to into port. Yeah. So you'd anchor it in the ocean, drop that, and you'd sail to port. Sure. Um, so what they did is, as they're freaking out, as the ship's sinking, Columbus is like, drop anchor. We can't drift anymore. They're like, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so they dropped it. Uh, and started taking off to the Nina, which was a few hundred yards in the distance. I love that <laughs> so much. They're like, hey, the boat's saying, should we tell anybody? No, we should get in the raft, the only raft we have, and we should get the fuck out of here. Like, they didn't so, get anybody else from the crew. It was yeah. just two, and him and two of his closest homies, and they're like, we're getting the fuck out of here. Fuck them all. Let it burn. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> so they sail, or they, they row their way over to the La Nina, and the La Nina's captain, Vincent Yanez, is like, what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> and they're like, dude, Columbus just sank the fucking Santa Maria. Let's get out of here. We all hate him. And Vincent is like, yeah, I know we all hate him. But if we leave without him, that's treason and the queen will kill us. Yeah, he's like the Get queen. Get the fuck back there and help. <laughs> and so they come back. Imagine the eye rolls of the size. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so they come back with they a... They come back with the only boat. <laughs> They come back with the only boat and a boat. Um, <laughs> oh, that's a good cover. Yeah, you got to come back with another boat. Because if you back... come back with the only boat, it's clear you left with the only boat yes. and had a change of heart. <laughs> so they come back with a boat full of people from the Nina being like, hey, man, uh, we came back with help. We definitely went to go get help. <laughs> we weren't just going to get on their ship. <laughs> and uh, they're like, we can use these two boats to tow the flagship uh, back into deeper waters. and maybe... So it can sink out there. Yeah, and maybe set sail. Um and they get back, and Columbus is like, you guys were denied uh, getting on that boat, weren't you? And they're like, no! <laughs> we went to go get help! And he's like, I fucking hate you guys. <laughs> he and probably <laughs> saw him getting in the boat, because his captain's quarters are right there. Yeah. So he's like, what? Hey. Oh, those fuckers. <laughs> um, but it's funny. Another Quietly screams into his hell. <laughs> um, another thing was like, you know... I don't think these boats will actually help. You guys were going to try to abandon this ship. And he's like, it was the idea to <laughs> that argument pull back it back in into forest. deeper water <laughs> yeah. was like, no, it was broken. Like, if we pulled it into deeper waters, it would just sink faster, like you said. Well, yeah, because it's already got coral going through the bottom of it. Don't take it into deeper water. And it's funny. Uh, so a historian believes that he was like, if anyone wrecked the Santa Maria on purpose, 
It was probably Columbus. <laughs> For what? Why? Yeah. Because he was done being bullied by De La Cosa? Well, here's the thing. The reason he believes this is because when Columbus saw that the boat was sinking, he was like, this is an act of God. God is telling us there's gold here. Oh, damn. Yes. Well, that's funny, because that feels like a callback. Uh, we talked at the very beginning, one of the news stories we talked about was about the Salton Sea. Yeah. Salvation Mountain is there because the man who built it uh, was flying a hot air balloon, and it crashed there, and he survived. His wife had passed, and he just decided, this is it. This is the place. This is where I was sent. And it is a shithole, and it's right between a former military base turned meth head punk paradise in Slab City and the Salton Sea, and it's the funniest thing, because it's just like this big paper mache paint it's beautiful it's yeah. gorgeous you know it kind of sucks now because it's all tourists and drones and shit but it's still really beautiful but that's why that was built too so that's that's interesting that's funny that columbus used the same idea like that's that just feels like a dude making up like columbus feels like a guy who couldn't possibly make a mistake yeah like there's no chance he couldn't have possibly made this it just crashes and he's like we meant to do that there's gold here god told me and it's, they're like what the Fuck, dude. It feels yeah. A lot of these, a lot of these occurrences feel like it's just religion is used as an out for men to be like, I did that on purpose. The biggest man told me to. <laughs> uh, Here be gold and also spices and probably people. And he's like, and if we're gonna make it back to Spain, we need gold and land. <laughs> so he was like, here's what we're gonna do. They rescued all the sailors, uh, but there was no room for them on the Nina and the Pinta. So they said. We're going to leave some of you guys behind. Luckily, there was a fort, or there wasn't a fort, there was a village. There was an indigenous village there. Uh, the local chieftain... Well, this is right off the coast of Haiti, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is off the coast of Haiti. The local chieftain that presi presided over this region, uh, Guacanagira is his name. He was like, hey, uh, I'm Columbus, nice to meet you. Boat kind of sank. Um, can we leave some dudes here? And he was like... Yeah, for some money, yeah. like, I'll trade you to let you guys stay yeah. here. And they're like, all right. That's well, a fair, that's like, yeah. you know, it's like staying anywhere else. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, cool, that's fine. I'm going to leave 39 dudes here. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull apart the Santa Maria and we're going to use it to build a fort. So that's what they did. They started pulling boards off the hall and started building a fort. All the sailors were rescued, uh, but there was no room for them on Columbus's ship, the Nina. Yeah. Because, um, again, they're small ships. Yeah. And this was the, the biggest, biggest one, one sank. Yeah. So what he decided to do is leave some men behind. Uh, he, casually. He got there. Uh, hey, listen, guys. Uh, can I talk to the... Like, he had them read off a list. <laughs> they all had to go to a different room, and he was like, hey, so we're leaving. Um, goodbye. And he just got on the boat and left. <laughs> So what they decide to do is they make that agreement with the chieftain and they're like, hey, we're going to pull some boards off the Santa Maria and fortify this village, make it a fort. Um, he left 39 men. Uh, one was a doctor. These are some notable people. One sure. was a doctor because they kind of needed a doctor. Well, because the idea was, in his mind, he was leaving people not to come rescue, but to sort of be the seeds of a new colony. Yeah. yeah. He was essentially... You guys, like, you can't forget that this is Christopher Columbus we're talking about, yeah. which means that his thought wasn't, oh, shit, we crashed outside of Haiti. We should come back, get our shit, and leave. It was, hey, we live here now. God put us here. There's gold here, so we're going to take your land. Yeah. Uh, and the local guy was like, but we literally live right, right there. They're like, this is ours now. Um, he left a doctor. Imagine trying to dibs a piece of land while your fucking ship is sinking. Like, <laughs> this is totally mine. Buddy, you got nothing to stand on. He's like, no, this is totally mine because I got nowhere else to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds like a refugee to me. Um, Louis de Touré, who spoke... Arabic, Spanish, and Hebrew, and was brought along on the journey as an interpreter. That's rich, just in case they've, what, made it to Florida? I don't know. Yeah, that's the funny <laughs> thing, is like, their original plan was to go to India. Why not bring anyone that spoke any, like, Indian dialects? Yeah, anything like that. Just, well, those are all, what's interesting is that guy was multilingual because those are all religious languages. Yeah. Yeah, so he's probably something of a religious scholar or something yeah. as well. Uh, Diego de Aranya, uh, who is Columbus's mistress's cousin, <laughs> and now the leader of this fort. 
<laughs> just leave him in he's charge. Like, well, you can't bring him back, you know? Yeah. Loose ends. He's you gotta like, make sure he stays. You're in charge. I can't have you causing any trouble. I understand you might be mad at me about the whole ship sinking thing, so I'm going to go ahead and need to keep you here, not in Spain. Um, and he's like, so, this is now La Navidad, uh, named after Christmas, because that's when it sank. That's true. Yeah. Uh, and that's when this fort was built. So he's like, What a Christmas, <laughs> man, what a great first Christmas gift. He said, Welcome to Christmas Town. The fort is built out of the ship you just almost died on. Merry Christmas. We own your town now. Wh wait, what? What's Christmas? <laughs> uh, he's like, you are in charge. Uh, the guy, I, or the guy who's the cousin of the woman I'm fucking, Mister Aranya. Uh, and your orders are to collect gold and wait for me to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so farm mats and wait. So Columbus goes back to Spain, and everyone's super excited. They're like, "Hey, you're back." You're missing a ship, <laughs> but you're back, and you brought, like, gold, spice, and people with you. Welcome back, man. And Columbus is like, hey, about that. I need more money and also another boat. And they're like, why? What's wrong? He goes, so you notice how I only came in on two boats, and I left with three? <laughs> kind of crashed that big one, and I left, like, 40 dudes in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but the good news is, God told me that's where I was supposed to be, and that there was gold there, so we're just going to take, like, 1,500 people with us, and we're going to start a colony instead of rescuing anybody. How yeah. much of a bummer would it be if you were, like, uh, you know, you're on this ship, you're ready for exploration, and... We d haven't emphasized this too much, but it's important to remember this was all in the same year. Yeah. 1492 is the year Columbus sailed the ocean blue and also the year he sank the ocean blue. <laughs> he did it in one year, which De La Cosa, man, I know I have this like fictional rivalry going, but yeah. he... If I was in his shoes, I would have been fucking furious. This oh, asshole definitely. who I don't like is leasing my ship. He's a dick about it the whole time and then manages to crash it without having owned it for longer than a year. Like, well, no wonder he got on that boat and was like, let's just get the fuck out of here. Fuck this guy. It, it, <laughs> it's very reminiscent of in the episode where we talk about the DB5. Yeah. Um, you told the story about your friend who collected cars. Yeah. And it was used in the Blues Brothers. Uh, uh, Indiana Jones. Oh, Indiana Jones. That's yeah. right. And they called him and they're like, hey, you know how we borrowed your car? Well, we crashed it. Here's some money. That's exactly what happened here. He's like, hey, you know how I borrowed your ship? I fucked it up. <laughs> but you know that because you were there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I don't that's blame like, him. If your friend was in the passenger seat when they totaled his car, yeah. that's what this would be like. Well, and you know when he got back, Columbus was probably like, well, you guys didn't let me really have enough time to pick that third ship. It's not really my fault that it fucking crashed. De La Cosa was a real asshole, by the way, the whole time. I don't know why you made me work with him. Yeah. Give me a good ship, please, with a nice guy, Captain. Please. He, he showed up and he's like, hey guys, you know how you sent me to go find India in a faster way? And they're like, yeah, did you do that? And he goes... No, <laughs> I found a new place and also crashed my boat. More money, please? Well, because you can explain it pretty well because you can be like, listen, we were beelining to th the east and then all this land popped up. Santa Maria was out front. Boom. We had an iceberg and it went down. I got some good news, though. That new land... It belongs to Spain. And they're like, cool, no one was there. And he's like, that's not what I said. <laughs> it just belongs to us now. So, so he gets financing for a much larger second voyage. Uh, and the main goal of this one was to found a larger settlement in Haiti. Uh, or as they like to call it, Little Spain. <sighs> yeah. Es bonita. So they arrive. His new fleet arrives. At or La what Navidad. Haitians don't want to hear you call yeah. it. They're like, nah, dude, this is Haiti, and it's been Haiti. And they said, ha little Spain. Also, I know we're in, like, the, you know, the latter part of the podcast now, but we did forget one important headline, and that's that the CIA killed the Haitian president. Oh, yeah. We sort of forgot about that and seemed to be actively pursuing, uh, at the very least, like, a manufactured consent in Cuba to, because there's a lot of funny business going on with that, too. Yeah. Yeah. Communism's not bad. U.S. <laughs> sanctions are. Yes. Anyway, uh, so in November 27th, 1493, almost a year after it, uh, La Navidad had been established, yes. Columbus gets back and he's like, hey guys, how's it going? I'm back. How much? I'm back for the one year gold. <laughs> How much gold did you? Are you guys sure we're in the right place? <laughs> There's not a fort here. <laughs> and everyone's like, nah, man, this is right. And he goes, oh, it must be that big black charcoal stain. Yep. Uh, the settlement was burnt to the ground and 
all of his men were gone. All 40 of them. There was no men, <laughs> no gold, no spices, and no fort. <laughs> like, uh, we'll get into what exactly happened, yeah. but before we get into that, it sort of spoils this joke. I like to think that the moment, the moment that ship was far enough away, they're like, all right, round them up. We're <laughs> killing them all. Get them the fuck out of here. We go through this once every three months. Kill them. So uh, <laughs> some of this colonist belongings were found in native homes nearby, and uh, Guacanagari... Is that a... Is that Terry's hat? They just slammed the door. <laughs> Guacanagari, the guy we met earlier, the chieftain, was Big like... Big guac. He was like, Ex it's uh, extra for guac. So, uh, guac and his brother cheese dip. Uh, no, <laughs> Guacanagari was like, hey, yeah, um, so your guys were massacred and your fort was burnt down, and it was definitely these raiders from another tribe. <laughs> and Columbus is like, hey, dude, no problem, man. I trust you. <laughs> Dude, you've been nothing but nice. You let us settle here. You've been a great host. Real bum that this happened, but no skin off my teeth. Guacanagari's brother, uh, who was another local chieftain, had a different story to tell. He was like, nah, man. Like, as soon as you guys left, your boys got a little disruptive. <laughs> He's like, the men of La Navidad went out to search for not only gold... But women? Oh, well, that was on the list. It was. It's on the list. Uh, <laughs> they should have looked for spices first. And they just started being fucking assholes to I the mean, locals. Yeah, we don't need to get yeah. into it, but everybody knows. Use your imagination. Yeah. Is, I'm sure is exactly as bad as it sounds. I mean, the entire point of these voyages was to find rape, pillage, yes. kill. So I have a uh, feeling that that's And they did was. all those things. Yeah. And Guacanagari. Oh, they burned their village down for it. That's so yeah. weird. Guacanagari was like... You know, fuck these dudes. We got their money, and they're here defenseless, and it's gonna be a while till the people get back. Let's kill them. I just think, imagine the like when people talk about the, like the sort of the indebted uh, or embedded rather uh, colonialism that's in some people mm -hmm. and the superiority that's in some people. Imagine the hubris of being a group of forty vulnerable, weaponless people yeah. on an island far 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 from home we're not talking about a six hour flight we're talking about a half a year voyage yeah away from home and instead of uh, understanding how kind they're being for allowing you to be there in the fucking first place and not telling you to get back in that ocean yeah you decide nah we should make a move on them we those guys are fucking losers we're gonna take their women like, it's like, what the fuck do you think you're doing you dumb sons of bitches that's like <laughs> you you have an airbnb yeah like you rent your house out to an airbnb and you got some guys that come in and they're like hey man our car broke down can we can we get this airbnb you're like yeah no problem just pay the fees everything like that and the guys are like sick thanks and then they start eating your food and they fuck your wife yeah <laughs> you're gonna and go. you're like what? I was nothing but nice to you. Your guys' fucking van broke down in front of my Airbnb. I let you guys stay here for some money because that's how the world works. And you fuck my wife? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's, it's a very, very bold assumption on Columbus's part. And I think if beyond anything else in history books or whatever, these sorts of examples should sure serve as the most telling of the hubris of these explorers. And like those people weren't going to survive. Why on earth? Like the only reason that the U S is the way that it is, is because every single treaty that's ever been signed has been broken. Yeah. Like it's because of <laughs> dirty dealings. It's not because the land's just there for the taking yeah. and the people aren't going to defend it. That's not the story. And I love, I love this part of the story because it just feels so good. Yeah. When we were talking about where the Santa Maria went, it got juicier and juicier. And I love that it ended in indigenous people just slaughtering these yeah. colonists. Well, <laughs> you know, the age old saying, like, get the fuck out of here. It's not your place. Just sorry. You landed in the wrong place. You know, the age old saying though, you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. You teach a man to fish. He fucks your wife and you gotta kill him. Yeah. <laughs> so. He steals your gold and rapes your wife. Uh, Guacanagari orders an attack and gets wounded in the attack. Um, <laughs> I'd like to think Columbus gets back and he's like, what happened to my fort? And he's got like a big bandaid on. <laughs> it's like he's still like, smoldering. Someone fucking attacked him, man. He's like, what happened? He goes, I tripped. He's like, 
Yeah, dude, you're my friend. I trust you. That's very um, believable. <laughs> I like to think Columbus just trusted anybody who was nice to him. Yeah. Because it was clear nobody liked him. And he just spent a year on ships with dudes who were like, you're a fucking asshole. I fucking hate you, I dude. fucking hate you. I hope you fucking die. Hey, man, uh, can we turn this boat a little to the left? <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I fucking hate this guy. Uh, and they burnt the settlement to the ground. And it, historians say the massacre may have happened around August or September of 1940, or 1493. Um, which is funny because he shows up in November, so it's been gone for a bit. <laughs> yeah, like probably long enough that King Guac forgot. Yeah, he's probably like, oh yeah, oh shit, oh, dude, uh, I yeah, honestly um, didn't expect guys, you to be back. It was like some guys from the Dominican side of the island. I don't know. I don't. It was a bummer. Anyway, welcome back. You brought a lot of people, and it makes me wonder if he told that story as a cover. Because Columbus had so many people with him, yeah, like I would imagine that he was probably people. like, he's gonna fucking kill me if yeah. he finds out that we killed all his people. Which is very funny. So a militant faction of the arriving colonists were like, uh, Columbus, ar arrest him, like arrest Guacanagari. Uh, he's obviously complicit in this massacre, and Columbus is like. No, he wasn't. He's my bro. <laughs> and one of the most vocal of this group was Father Bull, who uh, was a Benedictine a Scott, priest. That's like a Michael Scott. Moment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was a. Benedictine priest who had been assigned by the sovereigns to like be the priest for the boat, but also convert natives. Yeah. So a real piece yeah. of shit. Yeah. The worst kind. Um. And Father Bull and Columbus is started that a, to. Uh, is that a belief you got there? That's what nice. You, uh... Try mine out. <laughs> <laughs> the, the people at the fucking. He's, he's like the dude. A mall who... kiosk. <laughs> hey man, how's it going? You want to try this lotion? No, I'm actually just headed to the Gap. Cool, dude. I'm gonna hold you hostage for about 45 <laughs> minutes, and afterwards. You're not going to know what's going on. You're going to have $800 worth of lotion, and you're going to forget your own name. Um, you're Steven now. I'm pretty sure I wasn't. Nah, man. Here's $800 worth of lotion. You're Steven now. Uh, I'm Stevie the lotion guy. So they become enemies, because Columbus makes enemies with anyone that disagrees with him. But Columbus was like, nah, dude, I'm not, one, not going to arrest him. I don't want to get into a conflict with the natives. And the natives, like you said, were probably like, that's a lot of fucking people. I don't want to get in conflict with them. But he's like, hey, we got more pressing matters than investigating what happened. I got 1,500 men who are fucking exhausted. Well, and he, yeah, because he thought he was going to land in like a ready-to-go fort that yeah. was going to be populated with food and amenities. And he showed up to a scorched earth patch. Yeah. And he's like, I got 1,500 men who are fucking exhausted our food is starting to rot because it's so hot and humid here. And the last thing we need is to get into a fucking war with the people who already are here. Yeah. He's like, so let's fucking be nice to them, dude. And it would. But again, I'd just like to point out. Yeah. As, I just want to be nice to him right now is what Columbus said. <laughs> OK, so here's what I am going to say. Yeah, I'm just going to say that there one quick thing is that their solution is to move down the beach. Yes. Leave. Leave. Get the fuck out. Go. Go home. Go, home. Go back to Spain. Get the fuck out of here. It's not for you. This isn't where you're supposed to fucking live. King Guac killed your 40 fucking dudes because they weren't supposed to be there and they made a point of picking a fight they shouldn't have fucking picked. Go back to Spain, <laughs> you dumb pieces of shit. Your solution is not go further down this land that isn't mine. It's get the fuck off this fucking <laughs> island. Okay, I'm done now. Uh, so they see that there is a river a few leagues east of where La Navidad was. How far is a league? Uh, let's actually find out. Because I know that if you're uh, 10,000 of them under the sea. So a league is uh, 3.45 miles. Okay. Okay. So not far, but yeah. I mean, probably a... Seven miles? Well, no, it was, yeah, a few leagues. So yeah. probably a day's walk for them. Because you got to think, well, actually, no, it probably didn't take that much time. They probably just sailed down the coast. Yeah. Uh, so they Still, find a though, spot. Didn't sail back to Spain. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't go where they should have. Uh, <laughs> they just went where they. <laughs> so they find uh, this mouth of a river that's dumping into the ocean, a tertiary, if you will. Uh, they're like, let's settle. <laughs> I thought here. a mouth that was taking a dump was called a Columbus. <laughs> that's called a politician. Ah. Uh, they settled there. They're like, we're building a settlement here. It's La Isabella. Uh, it's you know the queen. The royal patroness. My bestie. My Mom. best friend. And the curse of the La, La Navidad fell on its successor. Because <laughs> uh -huh. it wasn't the curse of La Navidad. It wasn't even the curse of the Santa Maria. It was, it the, was curse the curse of Columbus. Of the, I think it was the curse of the Gallego. 
Mm. I think, or I think, as we pointed out, possibly the ship g- gained the curse when it's named. It name its name did change when Columbus bought it. Yes, fundamentally, right? Yeah. Like it was decided to be the Santa Maria. So yeah, maybe it was just Columbus. People think that this sort of stuff. We joke a lot when we're doing the research for this show um, that we find a lot of similar cases of like what happens to shitty people. And you'd be surprised how often I don't believe in karma, but you'd be surprised how I believe in aliens, but I don't believe in karma. You'd be surprised how often bad shit happens to bad people. Yeah. Like a lot of the historically bad people we've covered met a really shitty end. Yeah. Like they didn't go out in a good way or they didn't live the rest of their lives in a good way. So if there's a, a little bit to take from this show in general about life is that sometimes the bad guys do get what they have coming. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, so you think they build this fort, uh, La Isabella. Did things go well? I think it was actually pronounced La Isabella. <laughs> uh, no, it was uh, unrelieved misery and despair. <laughs> yeah, it was like impossible to build. The weather was insane. Yeah. Nobody had any of the resources to build. They were there all were getting sick. Coastal winds that were constantly knocking <laughs> shit down. There was famine because their food was rotting. There was disease because their food was rotting. I like the there was the, death because their food was rotting. <laughs> and the weather was just Mother Nature being like, yeah, keep fucking going. Keep going. Uh, and they were the, like, should we stay here? The pioneers were told that there'd just be chunks of gold lying around for the taking. And instead <laughs> like of just dropping like flies. <laughs> and uh, here's a quote from uh, Lacassus. He was... One of the settlers that was with them, they were plunged into the hard physical labor in constructing the works and the buildings. The people all at once began to fall ill, and many of them died, so that there scarcely remained a man of the Hildagos and commoners who did not become terribly ill of the fever. Uh, Superventing all the misfortunes was the great anguish they conceived in finding themselves without hope so far from their lands, and finding themselves likewise defrauded of their riches, which they had confidently expected. People, man. People's the third thing on that list. Going in and going out. He brought people everywhere. So... The site for the Isabella was super badly chosen, as we said. Yeah, and uh, impromptu, you know. Again, could have just gone back to Spain, but that would have affected his human trafficking business. So, it was a poor harbor. Uh, There were strong winds from the north to the west. It was, like I said, a tertiary. I believe it's a great place to crash a ship. It's such a fucking stupid idea to put a port where your ship crashed. Yeah. Like... If you had such a hard time getting into that spot, why do you think anybody else can? You know where we should put the moors? Let's um, let's put them around all the coral. Let's, yeah. So you got a park right on top of it. So um, it was also a tertiary, which if you know anything about rivers and the sediments they carry, when a river meets an ocean on a beach, it's pretty much just shitty sandy soil. Yep. Yeah. It's... You can't grow anything on that. Yeah. And their food's already rotten. Yeah. So they're not making more food. <laughs> Just living on this mush swamp land yeah. with rotten. What? I mean, what did they even probably bring with them? You know, they. I bet they had rotten pineapples. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Those, um, those goat turn... meat, probably. Oh. Like rotten goat meat. God. Which are, goat meat already smells bad. Yeah. Like as is. It's, it's a very. It's so sweaty. It's a very sweaty, ironous, like yep. meat. Yeah. Um, so smells rotten. like a wet dog. It does. Yeah. And it tastes. All right, if you cook it right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but luckily, um, within three years of Isabella being set up, Bartholomew Columbus, little Bart, uh, the energetic younger brother of Christopher, founded Santo Domingo on Haiti's south shore, which is still there. It is still there, and they just fucking abandon Isabella. They're like, hey, dude, your younger brother made a better place. We're going to go there. Christopher Columbus sucked so much. And, he like, did. even in retrospect, we dunk on him a lot because, you know, we can now. We're a more advanced society. But even then, he was such a fucking dork. Like, imagine going through all this shit, putting hundreds of, well, fucking thousands of people through hell just to set up a, a slave trade and then only to have it abandoned three years later when your younger brother built a way cooler city in a yep. much better place. That it wasn't burned down, you know? I mean, I'm sure he took it by force as well, but still. Yeah, that's wild. What, what a sad fucking memory. Is there anything left there? Uh, no. So they're not entirely sure where either La Navidad or uh, Isabella were. Oh. Um, and Well, we're vaccinated, son. <laughs> they are what just... What do you say, Ford Explorers? Should we go to Haiti? They're just nightmares left over uh, 
like people have haunting nightmares about living there. And uh, Father Lacasas, who lived there, uh, lived on Haiti for quite a while, from 1502 to 1527, um, he had a nightmare, and he wrote about it, about his time in uh, Isabella. And this is fucking terrifying. So it said, there are many on this island of uh, Haiti, but he called it something else. Espanola, yeah. They kind of uh, called everything that. Who would not venture without fear to go near Isabella after it became depopulated? It became a ghost town and people were terrified of it. He said, it was reported that one time towards the end of day, one or two men passing by buildings of Isabella saw two files of men, like two choirs, in one of the streets. They appeared to be nobles and of the court, well-dressed, girded with swords and muffled in hooded cloaks such as those which were in fashion in Spain at the time. One of those whom this to vision appeared... That part, to be like, hey, they were hip. Yeah. No, this story is crazy. One of them, to whom this vision appeared, saluted them and asked them uh, of when and whence they came. They responded silently, only touching their hands to their hats and returning the salute. Then they removed their heads from their bodies <laughs> together with their hats. So they lifted their hats, their heads My came lady. with them, becoming headless and immediately disappeared. Damn, that's a sick way to leave a room. That's a ghost story and a hat. What a great way to, what a great exit, just to pop your head off and then... Poof. It said, the vision and fantasy left those who witnessed it nearly dead. And for many days, they remained stricken with terror. Damn. So that's a, those are haunted grounds. Those are haunted fucking grounds. I, I'm telling you, man. I, how could you be Christopher Columbus and not have picked up a pretty serious curse at some point? That and like Crossing serious... Crossing every fucking person on the planet. Fucking PTSD, too. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, so Isabella and Ferdinand, the king and queen, were like, hey, guys, um, things aren't working in Haiti. Like, there are too many scattered places that... Yet yeah, dumbass sailors have set up. You guys are arguing. Columbus started arguing with his younger brother and was like, I'm now in charge of this place. And he's like, nah, dude, you were in charge of your shitty village <laughs> and I'm in charge of Santa Domingo, which, might which I is point way out better. Again, was built because you sunk a boat. Yes. Um, there is hostility of the colonists towards Columbus and his two brothers who all started sharing the governing of Haiti. Uh, and they're like, guys, you kind of put us here you told us we'd find gold. We found nothing but famine and disease. My best friend died a couple days ago. I'm pissed off at you. So luckily the king and queen intervened and they're like, hey, um, we're going to send this knight, uh, Francisco de Bobadilla. <laughs> uh, he's now going to be in charge of the place because you guys are doing a shitty job. And they dismissed Columbus from his high estate. <laughs> he got estate. fired. He got he fucking got fired. fired. And he tried to and resist the And we had Columbus takeover. Day in this country. This dude's the sad, sackiest, shittiest middle manager of global exploration there's ever been. Yeah. Um, so this is when Columbus finally gets his just desserts. Columbus is like, ah, nah, dude, we're in charge. Me and my two brothers are in charge of Haiti. And Bobadilla goes, nah, dude, the king and queen said I'm in charge. And they're like, no, you're not. He goes, cool. Uh, arrest him? <laughs> and everyone was like... Fucking gladly. <laughs> I have been waiting for so long to do exactly that. So they end up clapping Columbus and his brother in irons and sending them back as prisoners to Spain. That's hilarious. And uh, Bobadilla just decides to take over. That reminds me of, did you see, not to interrupt, again, yeah. tangent, I know people are like, they're banter. Uh, <laughs> but did you see the other day that the racist guy in New York who was talking shit then doxed himself and was like, pull up, and then like, 150 people pulled up to his lawn, so the cops had to handcuff him to take him out to make it look like he was getting arrested so oh, they yeah. would fucking kill him. Yeah. That's what that feels like to me. Oh, definitely. Uh, Columbus wrote um, in anguish to... In his journal? Donna, Donna Juana de Torres. Uh, she was the wife of the um, interpreter yeah, that yeah. he left. The guy who spoke Arabic and Hebrew. Yes. Um, he said, with cruelty, I have been cast into the depths. I have come to such a state that there is none so vile who does not consider he may insult me. He said, everyone's against me. I've been put in jail. Um, the sovereign. He was canceled. He got canceled. He, he did. Is fucking cancel culture. So this is so fucking funny. I love that he got canceled while he was alive and consistently every year since his death. Yes. <laughs> um, the sovereigns then released the Columbus brothers from their chains and indulgently authorized Col Christopher 
to undertake another voyage. <laughs> but that's some Dom Toretto shit. No, it was kind of uh, a damnation type okay. deal. Uh, they said, hey, man, you're really fucked up this time. You're going on another voyage, but you're never coming back to Spain. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you're going to explore until you die. You're not allowed back on Spain. And for the last six years of his life, he never set foot on Spain again. Interesting. And he died at sea. Interesting. Never returned back home. And all because he sank the Santa Maria. Oh, yeah. Uh, and in I case you're the, wondering... Yes, the seas weren't so calm that night, huh? No. <laughs> in case you're wondering, so Columbus died, never allowed to set foot on Spain again. De La Cosa... Uh, sailed with him for four more years they hated each other and he sailed with them for four more years that reminds me of lewis and clark a lot because yes. they fucking hated each other oh definitely like they hated each other um <laughs> De La so Cosa, much so that in that podcast we bring up that uh, one might have killed the other one yeah. <laughs> um de la cosa hated being with them columbus finally dies de la cosa wasn't like you know told that he wasn't allowed back on spain he gets back to spain uh the sovereigns are like yeah man uh you're gonna be the right hand man to this other guy he's gonna go try to steal another island for us they get there and immediately as they set foot on this island de la cosa gets shot with a poisoned arrow <laughs> from a native and immediately dies curse of columbus so they Once both columbus end up just gone, dying so on voyages he. yeah man that's a that is a an adventurer way to die like yeah. a poison dart that's some Tomb Raider shit. That's fun. Um, so you're probably wondering, what happened to the Santa Maria? Yeah, where the fuck is it? It sank. Um, it carried six anchors. Only <laughs> Jesus. one of them has it's been only found. It's 60 feet long. Uh, one of the anchors now rests at the Musea de Pantheon. Um, that's the National Museum in Haiti. Okay. In Port, uh, Port-au-Prince, yeah. Haiti. Um, but that is the only piece of the Santa Maria that's been found. That's interesting. Obviously, it was abducted by aliens. That's it the only was. place it could have gone. Temporal rift. It opened up and it felt... No, this one, I think, is much less our sci-fi uh, <laughs> sort of mindless stuff. I think, in this case, the ship just disappeared. Like, yeah. It wasn't that big of a ship, and that stuff, what they were... It was a bad port. It was... Um, I would imagine, like, once they got the pieces that they felt that they could salvage, they probably just let the rest go. They did. And I would imagine that rest over the past three, four hundred years in the ocean has just been spread out. Now, I could be totally wrong. If you have a better uh, understanding than we do, please leave a comment. But I would imagine that it's buried in the sand, or I would imagine it's just been so broken up. Because yeah. it, it was a shipwreck to begin with, and those nails are going to dissolve over time. I know there are wooden shipwrecks at the bottom of the ocean and stuff, but I wonder, I, they're never in ports like, not like that, you know, like it's no. got to be relatively calm. It just seems like it's too light. I feel like the tide would fuck it up. It so, fucked it up in the first place. It fucked it up when it was a whole ship. There was a discovery of sorts. Uh, if you are listening along and you're the type like me who like, oh, I need to know the answers and you looked up, where's the Santa Maria? You probably found a couple of articles that were published in 2013 and 2014. Yeah, there's one. The Smithsonian is one of those articles. Uh, and that's because uh, the 13th of May in 2014, an underwater archaeological explorer, Barry Clifford, claimed that him that's and his a, team... That's a good name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ...had found the Santa Maria. And he's like... Do you think his sub is called the Big Red Dog? Probably. It, it should be. It better be. Um, <laughs> the Hunt for Red October. <laughs> so it's about a dog It's penis. about a dog. Um, so <laughs> I'm absolutely calling the Red Rocket Red October now. He said, we found the Santa Maria. Uh, the Smithsonian was like, Hey, the Santa Maria was found. And everyone started posting the Santa Maria was found. Yeah. But nobody proved it first. <laughs> no. In October, the following October of 2014, UNESCO's expert team published a report. They examined the ship and they're like, no, nah, that's, that's not it. They're like, what do you mean? It's not it. And they're like, well, there's copper plating the hull, like, yeah, which wasn't a common practice. Yeah, that is a common practice in the 17th and 18th century. Yeah, not in the f fucking 15th century. And uh, there were a bunch of like the hinges on doors and the knobs on doors and stuff like that were all cast out of bronze. Okay, and that was just kind of like a a flex piece. Yeah. Like when people chrome out parts of their cars now, yeah, or people it, would make bronze instead of cast iron. Yeah. To be like, 
look how fancy my ship is. I got bronze door hinges. Well, even in like the, you know, the tackiest of all the hotels in Long Island, you find the sort of Trump look, which is gold knobs on everything. Yeah. yeah. So they were like, nah, man, that's what not the shit. an easy piece of gold to steal. Oh, yeah. And just, yeah. <laughs> just pop the pins out. <laughs> yeah, dude, just take all those knobs. <laughs> um, so, yeah. 20 pounds of gold on me. The ship hasn't been found. Yeah, it, it's still lost at sea. I think that this one's been tossed at sea. I think that it's... Oh, it's I probably it's, scattered and yeah. battered. I, but it's not... That's how I like my hash browns at Waffle House. Scattered, scattered and battered. battered. It's yeah. when they pour a pancake on top of it. They're going to steal that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright. Um, yeah, I think I just think it's gone. I think I think it obviously sank. I do think it was cursed. I, I kind of want to explore the idea of the curse. Uh, I think... Because it feels that way. Everyone involved with it met an unfortunate demise. Yeah. Now, I say that, but they a lot of... They saw fucking ghosts of the people who that took their, their heads, heads off. off. Well, yeah, because like, they got them cut off because they tried to rape the locals and yeah. the men didn't stand for that and dude, fucked them up. Imagine if you were at, like, a abandoned GameStop and you saw a sweaty dude with a fedora and he went, m'lady, and his head came off with it. You'd be and like, his duster just disappeared. They're like, I'm fucking terrified. <laughs> but yeah. I think that the ship was cursed. Yeah. I think it was left to the the depths, torn apart, probably food for a leviathan or some sort. We were talking about that a little bit the other night. We'll leave on this thought, I guess. Uh, here's one. I know you, I'm sure you have a riddle, uh, but yeah. here's, a, here's a question I have for everybody. What happens to all the whale carcasses? And I know, I know, you're like, well, you idiot. They, but a lot of them dissolve, and sure, a lot of them get eaten, but... What happens to all of them? Yeah. Where is where are all of them? Why isn't the ocean covered in whale bones? We were having a conversation with a couple of people the other day that were like, what's the most irresponsible thing you'd do with like an unlimited amount of money? One thing. Which, by the way, feel free to tell us what you would do in the comments. Yeah. Uh, mine wasn't that irresponsible. It was kind of boring. I said I'd explore the bottom of the ocean. But that's because we talk about aliens and shit all the time, you know, UAPs and UFOs and all this stuff, but we haven't even begun to explore what's down there. And like, mm. if Bigfoot's interesting to you, wait till you see these giant squid. You know, yeah. like some of the, the monsters that we talk about the crack and shit like that we there are still things that are like that alive today oh, yeah. and uh if you believe the lies that animal planet tells you on the shark week every year the megalodon is apparently still all around but that's been gone for a few million years. yeah yeah i wish that'd be fucking sick yeah uh to wrap up uh the the riddle everyone yeah. seems to be enjoying the riddle yeah so last week's riddle uh redacted well no I I was gonna go since we weren't able to say yes. Uh, since that episode's been redacted, um, <laughs> I can't wait till we get to tell that story. <laughs> the last episode that shows up or that you've seen, the answer to that riddle was a candle. I'm yes. uh, I'm tall when I'm young, short when I'm old. It's a candle. Uh, this week's there is one of me, but every time something interacts, I make two of them. What am I? Ooh. All right. Well, I was going to say uh, a male, <laughs> but I'm not supposed to give answers. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This was a really fun one to talk about. Good old fashioned curse mystery. And we got to talk, you know, yep. cathartically about Columbus getting his shit fucked up and how much his life sucked after he sunk the Santa Maria. Yep. Actually, pretty much from the moment he took on the Santa Maria, his life was a downward spiral. Really so, was. I, I think his life was always a downward spiral, but yeah, he just yeah. took everything along with him. Yeah, it just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It turned into, uh, what's the... Speaking of the Kraken, Pirates of the Caribbean, when the big whirlpool opens up. Oh, like yeah. That, he was that. He was just a giant whirlpool of shit, and everybody that was around him got sucked into it. Uh, fun fact that I just learned, we keep talking about Leviathans and Krakens and stuff. I just found out this the other day to wrap up the podcast. Um, they probably weren't that big. Leviathans come from a Nordic and Scandinavian culture. Mm -hmm. um, their longboats, while we do know the longer ones that were hundreds of yards long... When Leviathans were first written about, they were essentially in canoes, or slightly larger canoes. So when they say these great tentacles came up from the deeps and crushed their boats, they were talking about those. They're probably just talking about giant squids. Yeah, yeah, or octopus. Yeah. Do you think there was a time... Here's a final final uh, prompt for the comments, guys. Do you think there was ever a time where humans warred with the, we warred with octopi? Do you think there was a time when we used to have to fend them off the shores? Because they're Probably. very smart. They're super smart. And they're smart enough to be afraid of us, and we don't interact with them that much. Yep. So it makes you wonder, you know? Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, this was a really fun one to talk about. Uh, we got another good one coming next week, provided we don't get redacted. We don't have sponsors, so we don't ever have to worry about that. <laughs> uh, again, if you do have a story for us and you want to text it to us, send us weird pictures or leave us a voice message, please do. The hotline. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks have a so good much. one.
<laughs> take it fast and then we take it slow. It's where I wanna go. Way down in Coco Moo. The Nina, the Santa, the Santa Maria. <laughs>